let's get into some more trade news. So uh, people are making calls for Vucevic. Um, specifically, the Heat, the Spurs, the Celtics, and the Hornets have all apparently expressed interest in getting a hold of Vucevic. Um, Vucevic, let me pull up his number. Yeah, I've, he's having like a pretty good. He's been really good for like the past like five he's, years. He's been good for a long time. So yeah. like this season, he's currently averaging twenty four points, eleven rebounds, three point seven assists, um, three point seven assists, and a steal, shooting. Forty-eight percent from the field and forty-one percent from three. Yeah, bro. I'm... Uh, if the Magic his entire make... career, hmm? yeah. If the Magic if he... make this trade, aren't they essentially just pushing the restart button? Basically, at which point, like, they probably ship Aaron Gordon too. I'd imagine. Yeah. Just hand the keys over to Cole Anthony and uh, Markel Fultz. That seems like a really good idea right now. It does not. But, like, I mean, you could probably get a lot of, like, if they wanted, I'm not sure they'd nagle it. They could probably get a lot of draft picks. Yeah. I think, I think they're both worth... Uh, Aaron Gordon and Vucevic are both worth, worth first round picks, especially with the guys who are looking for them. Like the Celtics always had like two or three first round picks, and then the Heat, like they don't even when they get in the lottery, they don't even get lucky like that. <clears throat> they hit what they hit, but they don't. They're not getting like a top three pick or anything. What is it like? What? I'm, part of me is like, because I'm, I'm looking at the this list of, of teams, right? Mm-hmm. And part of me is just kind of like, with the Celtics, it's like, would you, would they really be, like, I'm one, like, what would the Magic ask outside of draft picks? Because you know they're going to ask for, like, some players back. And, like, would Ainge be willing to, like, give that up? Um, it depends on who. Who they ask for. Because I feel like at this point, the people that you even want to inquire for are untouchable. Like, um, there's no point of asking for Tatum. There's no point of asking for Brown at this point. Um, right. You might get punched in the mouth if you ask for Marcus Smart. Uh, I I think you would... Maybe Brad Stevens? <laughs> Yes, for Brad Stevens, I think that would be like more likely for you to part than like any player of like true value. Like, because they don't have anybody right now in their farm system that's just kind of crazy. Like, the only prospect, like the high level prospect that I can think of that they have that's not getting PT is like Romeo Langford. And most people see him as like, I mean, I think we see what we see out of this. And he's been in the league for like two years. Yeah. So. I mean, some, what? Oh, actually, no, I was a, I watched an interview Tim Duncan did, and like <laughs> something he mentioned is like, one of the things you'll notice with young, with those players who come in super young is that like, by like year three or four, they're like completely different players because like they they came to the paraphrase they basically came in as like children, functionally yeah. like high school like just a step above high like high school kids, and it's just like after that couple years you get that experience and like that extra development time. So like I don't know like Langford might not be much now, but he might end up being worth it. But like I don't know like. How good has Walker been doing? You said who? Kimba Walker. Kim, Kimba has been straight this year. Um, like I don't think his is one of his best seasons, but he's averaging 19, 19 points pretty much. 18.5, 3.6, 
rebounds and 4.6 assists on some not great shooting numbers. Uh, he's shooting 39% from field goal and 37, well, pretty much 37 from three pointer with 91 at the free throw. Right. Okay. It's like, I don't know, maybe you ask for Kimba. Like, I feel like at a certain point, like, the, the Celtics are going to need, like, salaries to match or something. Yeah. Yeah. You're not getting Kimba either. <laughs> You're like, probably not. But you can have Teague if you want a point guard. It's like, you, you can keep him. Yeah. Like, uh-huh. um, shoot. They got two um, guards that I think would be of interest now. Do I think Danny Ainge will give them up? Like, one more than the other. Um, Like, Peyton Pritchard? I guess you would kind of... That would be worth asking for. Maybe Aaron Naismith? But overall, I can't see... Peyton Pritchard is doing too well for the Celtics to really give him up. Aaron Naismith, I could kind of see it happening. But that don't do nothing for... The uh, Magic, like, thank you for giving us a third or fourth guard that we now have to balance with our young front, I mean, backcourt of the future. Like, thank you for making this rougher for us. Hmm. I'm just like, the Spurs, if they've got young players they could give up, like, if they felt so inclined, but I don't know, that, I don't know, something about that feels off to me. Yeah. Like this Spurs Spurs in the market. Yeah, so the Heat, Spurs, the Celtics, and the Hornets. Okay. I'm just looking at the roster and like who like who you betrayed for that where it makes sense. They always have uh first round picks over there at San Antonio. Go ahead, give me uh, Lamarcus Aldridge and uh, Yoko Poto in a first. I'll do it. Was the salaries work? I'm pretty sure the salaries would work. Because Lamarcus Aldridge, I believe he came there on the max. And if it wasn't a max, I'm pretty sure it's pretty close. Hey, mm-hmm. Lamarcus Aldridge is. Uh, Oh, I didn't. Hear. Yeah, he's been in the league a while. It's yeah, he's he out here looking like Tim Thomas. Oh, you remember Tim Thomas? I do not. I do Tim remember Thomas. Greg Oden though. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Tim Thomas was looking like fifty, and I think he was in like uh, like year ten. Like as a kid, it just didn't equate. I was like, you're you're really old, man. Yeah, but uh, LaMarcus Aldridge is making 24 a year. Okay. Um, and, like, the Hornets... It's, it's like the Hornets are players I could see them trying to, like, get. If, if they're like, all right, we're just going to build this stuff up. But, like I, like, I already know the Hornets aren't giving up ball. Like, they're just not. But everybody else might be up for grabs in the right situation. But the Hornets, I really have to look their roster up every time we talk about them. I don't I don't know who's on this team anymore, bro. It's um, like what? PJ Washington, um what? Miles Bridges, um what, Terry Rozier. Bismack Biombo. I keep forgetting okay. about Bismack Biombo. That man has been here for a while. Uh, but yeah, this is this is another place that if you're trading, like there's not a center prospect here that you really want. Like um, Vernon Carey, like um, he's the youngest center, but he was also drafted in like the second round. So. I mean, I feel like sure. it has more to do with, like, his the nature of his game than necessarily whether or not he's good, though. He played really yeah. well. Yeah. 
and but like, but like he played really well in Duke. If you think like he can develop those skills, it's probably worth like probably worth it. Yeah. Do you, you think that's a twenty four and eleven type guy at some point? Look, the reality is <laughs> probably nobody you get in the trade is going to be a twenty like is in the development twenty four eleven type guy. The most likely would be like PJ Washington maybe. PJ Washington also had a really good rookie year. I don't. I don't see them. Yeah, never, never mind. You know, Jordan is not a. I know he's not the GM, but the dude who is the GM, he also sucks at his job too. So, eh. I always love trade time. Like that, that those moments before uh, the trade deadline always get a little goofy to me. Mm. Well, it's just because like they they start throwing out. Train, like just kind of stuff. It's like, wait, would that actually work? And like half the time, it kind of amounts to nothing. It's just kind of talk, and the trade deadline comes and goes. Or like they were trying to move a dude, but they didn't get any offers. They like so some dude who's who's been playing games, stressing that like he's gonna have to uproot his family. Like it's suddenly like, all right, you know what? We're, we're good till summertime. I mean, hey. What comes with being a professional athlete? Bro, imagine if imagine if trade deadline was a thing in like corporate America. (laughs) That would be that'd be incredibly stressful for a lot of people. Like you, like you wake up, like like you go to bed, you're working at FedEx. You wake up, you see the news, you're like. GM now. It's like I don't even live close to the GM factory. Hey, this is not things we have to worry about. Thank God for being five ten, right? <laughs> Once again, Cal McGowan. Hope you enjoyed yourself. Um, if you are watching on YouTube, you know, like, share, subscribe, leave something in the comments. Um, you know, you can also listen to us wherever you listen to podcasts made it this far you know once again thank you i hope you got a lot done of whatever it was you're working on while listening to this um and yeah and enjoy the rest of your day